Seven things you can do immediately after getting your first ham radio license. I did a video about this three or four years ago, maybe five years ago. I'll link that somewhere up in here. Some of this has changed, some of it has not, and I want to give you my insights today in 2025 about the first seven, maybe eight things you should do after getting your first ham radio license or maybe your upgrade. Let's go. My previous video was a blog post that I had written a long time ago, and I just made a video about it and said that, you know, once you have a call sign, you should do these seven things, and they were just kind of things that I found useful to do with my call sign once I got my first call sign. Some of the stuff wasn't available when I, when I did get my first call sign, but I have done all of these things since then, and these are things that I use almost every day or every week today in 2025. So I'm doing an updated video here. The first thing is go to qrz.com and create an account. Now, if you have an amateur radio license, you already have an account on qrz.com. So you go in, you sign up and register, you go click on help register right here, and you'll go register with It'll say, if you don't have a QRZ account over here, it's free to register. Click here, and it'll have you fill out a form. Now, they pull all of the database information from the FCC ULS, so most likely your information is in there already if it's on the FCC ULS, but no one can see it until they sign in themselves. So in other words, the address you put on the FCC is visible to everybody on the FCC ULS, but it's behind a login wall on QRZ.com. But once you once you register on QRZ.com, we call it QRZ, it's QRZ.com. Once you register on QRZ.com, you'll be able to look up people uh, people's call signs, email addresses, shipping addresses. You'll be able to chat on some of the forums. You'll be able to, sometimes you can sell stuff on the swap pages. You can definitely buy stuff on the swap pages. I think at the time of this recording, the swap pages require you to, have a paid account, but you can do most everything on this website for free. You don't have to do anything. So it's a great resource if you get on the air and you start hearing call signs, especially on HF, and you want to look up where someone is, you can look them up on qrz.com and find out more information, email them, meet friends that way, and it's just a good resource of places to go to set up and register once you actually have a valid amateur radio call sign. Create an account on World Radio League. Now, this is a fairly new project. It's been around for maybe a year or so at the time of this recording. You can see this is my profile page right here. Anytime I go out to act rate parks on the air or summits on the air, which I haven't done in a while, or uh, maybe field day or a CUSO party, uh, they just recently added CUSO parties to this list here. I log my contacts in World Radio League. You can download their app. They have a desktop app that they're just about to release, which does not require internet to use. They have this website. You're looking at the website right now on the video. You can download an app on your phone, iOS and Android, and it those are free and you can and they synchronize. So you go out to activate parks in the air, you're using the app on your phone or tablet, put all your contacts in, you come home, you log into the website and everything's already there. It auto syncs for you by itself. You can find different spotting and activities and analytics over here on the left-hand side. You can get different awards, just kind of like a neat little fun award for stuff that you do, contacts that you make, countries that you contact. This is primarily useful for probably people with general or extra class licenses because it's centered more around HF logging activity, but you can totally log some VHF and UHF contacts in here if you want to. But check out World Radio League. It's a free account. You There are paid memberships you can get, sure, but uh, most of what we're talking about today, QRZ, you can have a paid membership, but there's a free account option. World Radio League is the same way. You can have a free account. Check that out. When you start logging contacts, you're going to be able to go back and look and see which stations you've worked, who you've talked to, when it was, what band it was, and all that kind of good stuff. It's a great way to keep a ham radio log. This is yahoo.com. I, I was talking to my wife about this the other day. When you get your call sign, I highly recommend that you go out and create an email address with your call sign at, I have Gmail, I actually have all of them. I have hotmail.com, yahoo.com, and gmail.com. I don't really use any of them except the Gmail one. kc5hwb at gmail.com is my email address that I use almost every day, pretty much. I have a couple of my own domains and they all filter through my Gmail account. But if you get an, a valid amateur radio call sign, 
you might want to sign up for mailing lists. You might want to sign up. You might want to put something other than your personal or work email address on QRZ.com when you sign up or on World Radio League when you sign up. And you can use this amateur radio call sign account at Yahoo or Gmail or Hotmail or wherever, live.com. I know some guys with a live.com email address. You can use that for all of your amateur radio activities. You don't have to worry about clogging up your regular inbox. I also recommend go ahead and register it, even if you're never going to use it. I say go ahead and still register it. That way someone can't go in there and register as you at some point in time and start sending out spam emails with your call sign on them. I've had a ham radio license for about 30 years, and no one's ever done that, even after I've been on YouTube. But anything is possible. If you don't claim that email account at Yahoo or Gmail or wherever with your call sign, someone could go get it someday and then you wouldn't have access to it at all. So I highly recommend going out to whatever email provider you enjoy, whichever one it is, maybe all of them, maybe go to all of them and register your call sign at Gmail, at Yahoo, at Hotmail, at Live.com, whatever, just to have it claimed just to claim it they're all free it's not going to cost you anything but just to claim it go claim your call sign email address on all of these services the fourth thing to do is to join a ham radio club now the easiest way to find out if there's a ham radio club near you just google the city that you live in i live in the i live in the city of grapevine so i would google grapevine ham radio club or grapevine amateur radio club and i would find there's actually several clubs near me, and I've been to most of them, and most of them are great clubs. So Google the city or county that you live in and find a club near you. If you have difficult finding an actual ham radio club near you, or if you go to a ham radio club near you and you don't feel like you're welcome, hopefully that doesn't happen to you, but there are clubs that exist like that out there. I recommend that you check out the Ham Radio Adventures Club or the K-Toads Club. K-Toads is the Coffee and Ham Radio guys. They have uh, the call sign KT, KT0ADS, so they have a club call sign. Ham Radio Adventures, I've been on several trips with them. Their, ob their objective is to go out and do ham radio in the field. Parks on the air, summits on the air, field day, this kind of thing. They are Whiskey Echo 4, Delta X-Ray. Both of them have Discord servers that I will link in this description below. You can join my Discord server. We welcome everybody over there, too. Welcome open discussion. Ask any question you want to. But the Hand Radio Adventures Club and the, uh, the K-Toads Club, the Toads uh, Discord server, are both great clubs that welcome new people and will answer any questions you have. And if you want to be a part of a virtual club, these are two that I recommend. Number five is to go register for an all-star account. Now, one of the things that I said in my last video and that I'm about to say as, as the end of this video is just get on the air. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Go register for an all-star account, allstarlink.org. I will put links to this and everything we talk about in the description of this video. Allstarlink.org, you can register for a free all-star account and get your own all-star node ID. And then later on, you can build a node or add a, different node to a repeater or something like that if you want to. But if you enjoy All-Star, All-Star is a way to link nodes and repeaters together over the internet. Now, repeaters can work as standalone and be completely off-grid and offline. That's how most of them are. But some of them are connected over the internet, and you can reach out to farther distances with your technician license with just a 5-watt handheld radio by connecting to All-Star and connecting your node or your repeater locally, if you have one locally, to other repeaters around the world. I have an All-Star node running in the cloud. The All-Star node number is 43136. I welcome everyone to connect to it. I was talking to a couple of people earlier today. You can see right on here, if you go to hamradio2.com, forward slash all-star you'll bring up a page that looks like this and you can see we've got people connected i'm in texas we've got people connected from pennsylvania florida missouri let's see universal city texas minden minnesota or i'm sorry michigan north carolina connecticut another north carolina minnesota tennessee florida another station in texas another station in illinois you can connect to All Star via node uh, all star node 43136 via your home personal node or via your repeater. Now, you have to have an all-star number, which again is free, to register a node of your own. Or if you have a repeater near you, you don't need anything. You could just keep that repeater and, and use the all-star system, assuming that the person who owns that repeater allows you to do so. But go out and register for an all-star account because it is something that you will probably find a lot of usefulness in, a lot of use out of, especially if you want to connect and talk to me and 
other people who hang out on my all-star system. Likewise, Echo Link is a free app you can download on your phone, iOS or Android. And you have to prove that you have a call sign. You have to prove that you have a amateur radio call sign to get an all-star node and to get an Echo Link no, and to use to download and, and log into the Echo Link app. Once you have an amateur radio call sign, you can open that up and you can use Echo Link to connect to other repeaters over the internet directly from your phone. You don't even need a radio to do it. There's a way to do that with All-Star 2. It requires a couple more steps, but it's not that difficult to do with All-Star either. And I personally think All-Star sounds better. But I've had Echo Link on my phone for a number of years, a long, long time. I use it sometimes. It is a free app. Free download, free registration, no problem there. I So if I ever get into an area where people are talking on Echolink, I can pull up my phone and join the conversation. So create an All-Star account, create an Echolink account, join us on 43136, my All-Star system, which is right here. And the last one is to just get on the air. Just get on the air. Get on the air. Get a handheld radio or a mobile radio in your vehicle, a mobile radio in your vehicle with an external antenna is going to reach out farther, not only because it has more power, but because it has the antenna on the inside of, on the outside of your vehicle, rather than talking like this on the inside of your vehicle. So it's going to reach out farther. You're going to be able to get into more repeaters and talk to more people that way. Join us on All Star. Join us on Echo Link if you can't reach anyone on your local repeater. We did a repeater challenge at the beginning of 2025. I had a lot of people come by and say, "Yep, yep, this is working. I'm getting." I'm throwing my call sign out the first few days. I didn't hear anything, but then I had a good conversation a few days later. So we're trying to get more and more activities on the repeater. And it's up to you to key up and light up the repeater near you. So get on the air with your new technician license and your new call sign. Fire up some repeaters. Get some local comms going in your area. Connect to us on All Star and do the same thing. And check out the link for this and everything in the description below. Once again, this is the top seven things that I recommend. And all of these things you will find useful. You might not find them useful on day one, but you're going to find them useful over the course of your amateur radio journey. And if you have any other suggestions that you think I should ha add to this list, put a comment in the video description below. Thanks for watching today. Check out all the links below. Again, these are all free accounts you can do. Doesn't cost anything to use any of these services that I just mentioned to you, 73.